Hey everybody, we are on day one of our family trip sourcing, thrifting, family hay fish bone Hi. adventure and we're going to see what we see today. Okay, so she's open, but there's no lights, and so we have to use flashlights. <laughs> yeah, I've got one on my phone, and so do you, so. Okay, so it's editing me. I don't know if you guys noticed, but in that little video clip that Mr. Pishposh filmed that little basket of sewing patterns and I totally missed it until I saw this footage. So I guess it really was dark in there because I think I walked over in that direction and I guess I should have done what he did and had my flashlight on, but can you believe Mr. Pishposh did not even mention them to me? <laughs> I believe it because I've got more sewing patterns than I know what to do with. Even without lights in there, Mace found this, which as you can see, we don't have a lot of room for our sourcing, <laughs> but going in somewhere. I just want it noted that he bought the big thing, not me. Well, I did buy something that takes a little bit of space, but how much do you think that's worth? Um, potentially 200. It's for drafting, yeah, right? It's a drafting arm for a drafting table. Drafting arm. So if you see this, Vemco. You pretty uh -huh. much want to grab it. Vemco, okay. Um, and it was 10, but it was 25% off. 750. Fun fact. So, almost to the minute of Mr. Pishposh being in that thrift store, finding that drafting arm, and making that video talking about Vemco, we sold a Vemco drafting machine plastic ruler for $50. So it was just so weird because he found it and then it was like we came out of the store and like cha-ching and our Vemco piece had sold. Isn't that crazy? And then I bought a bunch of Trixie Belt books. Sorry. So 
Sorry for the road noise. Um, I got some jewelry I can show you guys later. And Mace bought some pens. Mr. Fishposh bought some pens that we're just going to dig around in and see if they're worth anything. But anyway, that was our first little stop. Okay, so I know I've showed this place in a previous video, one of our other road trip thrifting videos a long time ago, like a year ago. Um, but anyway, and I've, I, th I think what would happen there, if her prices were lower, we'd be in trouble. Mm, yes, for sure. Because there's a ton of stuff in there and I don't have internet in there. You and have so, to come outside yeah. to check anything. And so it's just kind of like, I would probably be like, oh, I'd try this, I'd try this. But her prices are high enough that I'm like, nah. I did get a well, cool mid-century necklace thing I'm going to show you later, but... Um, and some of that is consignment. Oh. It's not all hers. Okay. And then the other thing is she she likes to bundle stuff up into a box and say, the whole box is $20. And I'm like, I might just want one little thing. Right. And I, I didn't see anything, like, she probably would sell it to you separately, but I didn't see anything that, like, made me want to go there. Anyway, there's the train. It was interesting. Yeah. Paradise <laughs> is loud. It is loud in paradise. paradise. Has a lot of cars and trains, <laughs> but it has good thrifting. Yeah. Anyway, okay. That's all I wanted to say about that. We're moving on. Thrift store, a putt putt golf, and a vintage clothing tent. <laughs> it's gonna so be interesting go no matter what it is. <laughs> Isn't today Monday? Yeah, but look. Aww. Oh, of course. Okay. Closed on Sunday, which is the day we drive through again. Um, you can put money in and play. Oh, we can't? Mm -hmm. Oh, we can't. Pay inside it. if the door is open. Mini golf after hours drop box. Eight fifty per person. Yeah, we can play. Yeah. That's what I'm excited to learn. Let's say no to golf. Huh. Especially puppet. Let me go. All right. Pick your color. Sam. Blue. Blue. Of course. Tim. Uh, orange. If they oh have no, one. not orange. If they have one. This I thought that was your. I thought you hated orange. Actually, that's like yeah. yellow amber. Right. I'm gonna go with neon. 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 Okay, so if you're ever in St. Regis, Montana, you want a thrift store and a mini golf a thrift store. And a vintage clothing tent and a vacation home rental camper trailer then this is the spot for you I'm just bummed that the thrift store is closed <laughs> We are on day two of our thrifting trip and we decided today as we hit a couple thrift stores in amongst the other fun things that we have planned for the day 
that um, we would set a little challenge for the boys to kind of get them involved as well. Um, they're not big thrift store aholics <laughs> yet. <laughs> but there are, there are things they like to look for, <laughs> certain categories. Right. So they have areas of the thrift that they kind of beeline towards. So we decided to, to keep them involved in this on this trip to have them look for things in those categories that they could possibly flip. Right? Mm -hmm. Yep. So like for Sam, maybe some books or electronics. Tim, maybe toys, sporting, sporting goods, goods, things the like that. places they like to go. Places they like to go. And the idea being kind of like what we all do. A lot of times we, we thrift, but we're also looking for things for ourselves. Mm -hmm. So if the boys are kind of used to looking for things for themselves, also look for a couple things to thrift. So you can end up paying for your own purchases covering the cost of whatever you buy for yourself by finding something to make a profit on. Yeah, we, we do it all the time. We do it, yeah. That's how we pay for <laughs> all of our clothing. <laughs> Pretty much. Actually, <laughs> is by finding it while we're out looking for other things to make money on. So we're going to just try to see. We'll see what the boys come up with today, and we'll uh, share that with you guys later on, as, as well as any of the other cool stuff that we find. Yeah, it's glass. It is a base for a salt and pepper shaker that would go right here. So green tags are half off today, so it would only be 99 cents. And I'm going to look it up, though, okay. just to double check that people want the base. Is it marked? Uh, probably not. It's probably like an anchor hawking. Gotcha. Something like that, but little, they're cute little. I don't know if the whole set is worth the most. There's a hooligan loitering behind you. Like, would it, like, is it worth just the base? Right. Selling? Okay. Okay, so how'd we do guys? Did you guys find anything at that first stop? Uh, no. I okay. did find like a, a radio CD player sort of. Uh, boom box. Boom box. Yeah. But it couldn't test if it could work or not. Mm. And it was kind of heavy. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's good okay. though. Sure. You had a good eye. He picked the one thing in there in appliances that probably had value other than just for what it is, right? Right. So. Okay. Well, we'll keep checking. Uh, as for you and me, like we had some stuff in the cart. I'll put up a picture right here of what I had in my cart initially, but then we put a bunch back. Yeah. <laughs> so some stuff was like we've said before, we have like space constraints and we're just trying to stay kind of focused yeah. in 
honed in on not just buying everything. We're still early in the trip, right? Yeah. So some stuff was damaged. Some stuff just wasn't worth. But you the, grab the it time and then you kind of whatever. think about it, and maybe research it, and it just turned out to not be something we want to haul home. And right. Deal with. We have enough stuff. Already. Yeah. So we'll. Um, I'll just share those later at the end of the day. What we did end up coming home with, but we're gonna go do something fun and then maybe find another surf store later. Oh, that was awesome. <laughs> That's all. Look at all this furniture. Just something I wanted to mention about that first Goodwill that we went to um, that I forgot to mention was that um, it's in a different like region than the one we're in in Montana. We're now in Idaho and it's like Goodwill of the Inland Northwest or something like that. So, you know, set up a little bit differently. It had color tags, things like that, things that we don't have at ours. But uh, interesting, the what I remember also from like the ones in Washington was they got a lot of Target like shelf pulls. Over, like overstock or just things that Target was clearing out like the one in Washington's the ones in Washington always had that too or had like a little section where they put it all together now this one had like so much of that stuff like our our Goodwill has like some kind of uh, like new stuff but it's you know dollar store quality or you know things like that um wholesale maybe that they kind of fill their shelves with but um, this one was like all that stuff was mixed in with the donated stuff on every shelf, every category. And in some cases there was more of that stuff, I feel, than donated items. So it was kind of hard to like dig through all that stuff. I wasn't a fan. <laughs> um, so anyway, I still have to show you what I got at that one. When I get home, um, I will do that, or back to the hotel. The boys are gonna go do a little disc golf, so I might just stay back and um, do a little recording and things like that. Um, other thing I was gonna say, oh, so then the second thrift store you saw us go into was an Idaho youth ranch, and it was okay. Like, we only picked up a few things there. I'll show you that too, just some mostly like sewing patterns. Mr. Pishposh got a couple buckles, and then um, I think I got a belt and a hat or something. So some things were a little pricey. They did have a section, and we didn't film. I didn't film much in there, but there was like a section, kind of like a counter, like an antique. Like they collected all the vintage stuff up and put it back there and put kind of a high price on it. So anyway, I kind of perused, but I didn't see anything that jumped out at me, so... Anyway, still trying to fit some stuff in that the boys want to do as well. And honestly, okay, so my oldest son is doing okay. He's still trying to find something at a thrift store that he's kind of interested in that he can flip. The second thrift store, after we had gone to the skate park and everything, I think my younger son was tired and hungry and he did not care. <laughs> like, like, he didn't care about the challenge at all. So... <laughs> We'll see. I don't know. You can lead a horse to water, but you can't make them drink. And we'll see how they do as they grow up, whether they ever view this, you know, as a little side hustle that to, to us just makes sense that if they learn these skills, they can always use them. But that's how it do be with kids and their parents, right? Okay, so I will uh, probably... I don't know if we'll hit another thrift store today. It's possible. But anyway, um, at the hotel, I'll share the things that we found today. Please don't. Okay. I got it. Green apple high chew. Lovely. Watch for cars. <laughs> you guys are hilarious. Who needs dad jokes with you guys around? Me.
Thank you. Okay, so first I wanted to show you the jewelry from yesterday at that first stop that we made. This was the jewelry I ended up picking up. It's this awesome mid-century, uh, very modern looking necklace and earring set. And as you can see, the earrings are still on their original card. And the company is LaRue, L-E-R-U. And like, as it says, right, it's featured in or advertised in Vogue, Glamour, or maybe not Vogue, but Mademoiselle Harper 17. You know, not, it's funny because I haven't done a quick, you know, I did a quick search, but there's lots of, LaRue did a lot of different styles of jewelry. And so this kind of very modernist mid-century look, um, I didn't see anything totally like it. So I still have to do a deep dive like into Worth Point or someplace like that, just to see if I can find anything like closer to it to get an idea of comps. I did pay $10. It looks like she had it marked down from 20. Um, and the only other thing I picked up in that thrifting in the dark thrift store was this cute little brooch. I paid a couple bucks for that, but I do think maybe there's a, a stone missing for the eye, but I just thought it was super cute. It's unsigned, so I haven't done any research on that one, but I kind of like the texture on it. Very, very cool. Okay, hold on one second. And I'll grab the stuff we found today. So as you can see, we pared down our Goodwill cart quite a bit. We did buy like a shirt for personal use. Uh, Mr. Pishposh picked up a signed baseball, vintage baseball. Um, which I don't have in front of me right now, but I did pick up these plates. Here's just one, the rest are out in the car. And they're different like grapes or cheeses or things like that, but I, I picked them up. They were the green tags, so they were only 99 cents. And I think I picked up either six or eight, and they are Philippe des Houliers, something like that. Anyway, it's a Limoges. I think I've sold something by him before, but made in Limoges and just cute little appetizer plates. So if I have a comp by the time I'm putting this video together, I will put that comp together up on the screen for you. And then I did get the ultra temp um, little pie thingy, but I haven't ever sold them in white. So I think I can get about $12 for that by itself. And then if I ever come across, you know, if I come across other white ones before, before I get a chance to list that, then possibly I can just make up a lot. Okay, so then at the other thrift store that I went to, that we went to, that Idaho Ranch Thrift, I did pick up a belt. This is Bison Designs, which we've sold several, several times. And it was a nice long one with a nice pattern. So we picked that one up. That one was like 350, I think. Uh, this looks just like the other one, right? But this one is Pyrex. <laughs> so it's not quite as heavy duty as the Ultra Temp, but anyway, we grabbed that. Mr. Pishbush found that one and he found this one. I think it's Echo, if I remember correctly. But I think I have another utensil with the same mark the same design so nice cute little pie server uh, these are the buckles mr pishposh picked up uh, this one ims i'm not sure exactly what it stands for i don't know if he knows either he did see that bts makes really like the buckles they make sell pretty high so it's a 1980s buckle and then we'll just see you know their price depends on like like what the company they're advertising is all about. So we'll find out what that's about. He said this one has to do with railroad. So he grabbed that. I found our favorite kind of color. It's a wool ski hat uh, made in Canada, but our favorite colors seem to always sell pretty well for us. That one was 250. And then I noticed Mr. Pishposh picked up this watch. It looks like a very cheesy promotional digital watch, but it's for Blockbuster Video. So 
you never know. <laughs> and then I grabbed patterns. Oh, I don't know. This is a V shred. Uh, what do you call that? One of those shaker ball kind of tumbler type things. I don't know if that was something Mr. Pishbosh wanted to use or keep. So that might have nothing to do with reselling, but it was in the bag. Um, I did find some patterns. I don't, you know, a lot of times I can find patterns for less than a dollar and these were not. Some were two, some were like a dollar twenty. So I was very selective of the ones I picked up. Um, I picked up a Hawaiian one. This brand usually does pretty well for us. Um, jackets. This one's so easy. Unisex jackets seem to do pretty well. Holly Hobby embroidery. And then the rest were kind of the, I don't know, you homemade ones or whatever you call them. <laughs> uh, independent pattern makers doll shoe patterns for Lady Grace. So I didn't look any of these up. Um, I just grabbed them because they were interesting. Sacagawea dolls and William Clark. Couldn't find Lewis, but anyway. Those I'll just kind of, you know, probably I'll, I'll just bread and butter on those. And then that last uh, city thrift that we found, this is all I got there. Picture storybook. Um, it's very sweet. I paid $5 for this. And let's see the date, 1943. But again, I buy things for the ephemera. <laughs> So like, like I just love the illustrations in this and I think someone else would like this too, right? A vintage storybook. I think it'll sell. Oh, look at the kitties. Okay. Hold on one second. So thus ends day two of our thrifting adventures. We'll hit a couple more thrift stores tomorrow. There's not too many left. Um, that we were going to hit. And then Thursday we're on to the next little leg of our trip. But anyway, um, I think what I just enjoy, even though we haven't had like any kind of like major home runs or anything like that, I think what I just really enjoy is thrifting in a new store, right? You get tired of going to the same stores over and over again, seeing different stuff, but then also like building your appreciation for the thrift stores that you do have. <laughs> I realize, you know, we're very fortunate. The thrift stores we have, we do find good things on a regular basis. And I'm sure you would here too. You know, you, I'm just hitting a store at a certain time, right? Um, and I would figure out the sales rotations and things like that. Like I figured out with my own local thrift stores. Because if someone just came into my local thrifts, they'd be like, oh, these are so expensive. And we saw a lot of expensive thrift stores today too. So I would say ours are expensive too, but I we know the sale patterns and, and things like that, or we have some other sources that we know that we can get things a little bit cheaper. So anyway, so it's all very interesting. It keeps, uh, keeps us entertained <laughs> and just the process of thrifting is just fun anyway, right? So... Okay, the boys are all out uh, doing their fun stuff. I think they're back at the skate park, and my older son will be joining in. He picked up a scooter that he's going he's gonna, to uh, test. But anyway, I hope you guys are doing great, and I will be back to talk to you all tomorrow.